you. Thank, thank you for being here. Ruth, as you know, we had planned a trip to go over to Africa, and there's a little bit of war going on over there, so it's not uh, the best place to go right now. So Ruth decided to come here, and basically she's here just to thank everyone for what you've done, and I wish that more people could be here. I know it's the holidays and it's crazy, but there are lots of people to thank. This room really could be filled with hundreds of people who have helped out. So yeah, Ruth, we're just going to let you kind of get to know her a little bit better and maybe talk about the hospital and what we're doing over there, and yeah, that'll be great. And then uh, Jeremy has something to present after. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, uh I'm just happy that I could make it uh, this time. I know it's a busy month, a Christmas month. I see lights everywhere. <laughs> uh, really beautiful. Uh, but uh, to come and thank you all, uh, because from the time I visited, I think it was February, I was being reminded um, when the baby here was just mm -hmm. brand new baby. Mm -hmm. um, it's so much has happened since that time. So I wanted to say thank you, and Katie, Danny, and the a family for staying in touch and also for hosting us and thank all of you for what you have done, your good thoughts, your good deeds and for actually believing in the project and believing in me uh, to have gone ahead and done this uh, already. Uh, we were all ready to receive you. Louis came ahead of time. We went round. We agreed on what the itinerary would be. Uh, we took him to places. So we were just all getting set. But for some reason, I, something kept telling me, I'm not so sure it's going to happen yet. Mm. Uh, and then there we were, without planning or without expecting, uh, Kenya actually now went into Somalia to, to flush out the terrorists. They called them Al-Shabaab. They had been living in our midst because we kept getting bomb blasts in places and not knowing who was responsible for them. Nobody saying whether they were or not. And so it became very, very insecure, especially around Nairobi mm -hmm. and in uh, northern parts of the country. So um, the country went in and they are busy now seeking support from the United Nations, which they have just received, and also to censor Eritrea, that apparently is uh, the country of Eritrea, which is sponsoring these groups. And so virtually we were surrounded, porous borders, uh, with Somalia, and then at sea, the pirates. I'm sure you heard about the pirates, Americans have also been uh, affected. So, so far now we have support. We have American support. We have French support, because uh, it was a French woman who was one of the first victims. She had lived in Kenya for many years. So they came, picked her up, um, and, and uh, she was married, found her. So it's, it's not been easy. So the American government issued a travel advisory, and when they do that, you, and you are you know responsible for people, you don't want to take chances. <laughs> yeah. So Louis called me and said, we're just wondering whether we should come at this time or not. And I said, you know, come to think of it, it may not be a good idea. And uh, let's see how things settle down. So far, since um, two weeks after going into Somalia, we haven't had any incidents. But actually, the, they report almost daily on national television what's going on, but you know, the governments, whether it is true or not, you know, but uh, to a large extent, uh, we have support at least, and uh, the African Union also has given, endorsed the, 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 you know, the, the scheme, and uh, so, uh, and, and, and I think it's, it, we are just realizing that the, the extent of the problem it was big. We were just living there, you know, innocently, not realizing that we had enemy amongst us. So that's why then we postponed this. But meantime, I've gone ahead to get a plan. I was telling Katie that I brought the plan. I was given a quotation because she asked me for full quotation. I was worried about full quotation. Nobody gives you full quotation in Kenya. Because by the time you are through, it is four times what they quoted you. <laughs> and you don't even know whether it is true quotation or not. So I told her, no, I got this quotation by a government contractor where there's a lot of corruption. Not that I'm going to use him, but I need to use someone else to get a second quotation. 
And then also telling her that in, with something like this, where we are going to involve the community, so they get uh, they feel a sense of ownership. Uh, it, it would be better that we, we sort of do it in phases. Because if we do it in phases, already they are asking and they even want jobs and they want to be involved. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes it a lot, lot easier. And then the things you collected, we saw them today. <laughs> a lot of good stuff. I mean, I took a hey, oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, a lot of good stuff. So I've told Katie, no, no, this one, let me go back. I chair the board of a, a, a national hospital. They're always receiving things. So I'll work with them. Because I've had friends who come and I take them there, they also give them things. And I saw some things there which could also serve the, the hospital. So together, we'll agree that they actually bring them into the country through a container. Mm -hmm. So that it's not just a one time off. Because that stuff is so good and can be so useful. And actually, whenever I go to the village and I see these uh, children, I carry what I can. But I can't do a whole lot. But whenever I see them, I just think of the U.S. and the many, many good clothes around, you know. But you know, you want, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. So I better just work on how a container can actually come over. Yeah. So and then uh, I, I knew about the dinner and the, the, what you put on, what are, all of you have done, really. I just want to say thank you. We want to arrange it so that when you come, you you, you are. You are, you are, it's an experience of a lifetime. I know many people come to Africa, the first step is just get there. Once you get there, you fall in love with the continent, you want to come back, and you, you see the need. It's not just what Ruth tells you. You see the need yourself, and you say, you know what, I feel good doing something about this. Yeah, but uh, my coming, uh, even if I'm not going to Canada, I told uh, Katie that I'll use my frequent miles to come. Since you couldn't come, I better come. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. just to keep assuring you and um, to, to uh, tell you also that I'm, I'm very strict on, uh, on good governance in the sense that I'm not going to be alone managing this. And it, that's a major risk, you know, something could happen. But people want to see it get started and have friends already who are willing to form a committee volunteer their time and also see what also on our end uh, in Kenya we can also do so that it is a proper partnership. Yeah, but, uh, we had planned that when you come, we break the ground, some uh, bricks will have been made, you, have, you carry them, you know, and you are part of it and uh, you feel good about it and, and so on and so forth. So the plan is still to arrange for the trip to come. Uh, not necessarily when the government uh, of the U.S. lifts the uh, advisory, but when I'm assured, at least in the next year, that things are sort of calm and they are okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Ruth, do you want to um, maybe just tell everyone a little bit just about the hospital and about the different, uh, how this is a hospital that offers services that no other mm -hmm. hospital offers and how you've already started, Ruth has already started one medical clinic mm -hmm. and, and, uh, the, and how the government kind of stepped in and helped out and how once this hospital yeah. that we are building is built, how all of the nurses and everyone will be transferred and yeah. use it. Yeah, the, the hospital project uh, for those of you who were here last time, as I said, it's been a lifetime dream from the time I was a little girl uh, in the village and uh, being aware of people dying sort of needlessly because the medical facilities were too far. My own family also being affected and I grew up saying uh, I must bring a hospital to my people. And so when this idea came up uh, through KT that what can we assist with, I just thought of the hospital. And of course, it requires uh, major funding, but I believe where this, uh, uh, you know, a, a will, there'll be a will. And uh, I, I see this as a, a major project of this this particular group. <laughs> you can call it you call it your group, but I'm sure once we start, other people will come in. So what we have at the moment, just to show you how serious it was, that uh, my parents gave land to build a church. 
and then my and my sister was a nurse. So we just opened a window initially to start dispensing uh, services and medication. And then uh, before my dad died, he says, oh, as a community, we just want to put up a, a temporary structure uh, for as, as, as a clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at that time, I was in the Kenyan parliament. And Kenyan parliamentarians are paid well, by the way. But I used all my five-year pay to be doing these kinds of things. So I said, ah, Papa, you cannot do that, because people start laughing at you and saying you have a, a daughter who is a parliamentarian. How can you put on something temporary like this? So I actually used my funds to put it up. So uh, I then, again, I used my position to have the government take it over, even though it wasn't ready at that time. By government taking it over, it's a community effort. So the government takes it over, not completely, but at least they reward you by sending you personnel. So we have two nurses paid for fully by the Kenyan government, and they also give you essential drugs. But uh, something I also brought in, using my own funds, was a, a medical a, a microscope. Mm. Because we have these diseases, I mean, you know, you are going to come already probably a bit vaccinated, including Emma here, <laughs> typhoid, <laughs> malaria. So for example, if you, the symptoms of typhoid and malaria are similar, very much similar, because I've had both of them. Now, if you treat typhoid using malaria drugs, you are killing someone. Mm -hmm. They just die. And many dispensaries don't even have a microscope. So they cannot ascertain what it is you have. You know, it's just guesswork. You know? So we have people dying from all kinds of things, you know, needlessly, because the dispensaries are not, uh, the medical facilities are not well equipped. And then I brought in a young man whom I educated through college, an orphan kid who did medical technology.